Another form of dating is a dating with sincere intentions for marriage. It's no joke. It's not a game. They're not playing. They're not going to have uh, a fun time going out on a Friday night or a Saturday night to enjoy themselves. No. Number one, their sincere intentions for marriage. This is one. Two, they have the blessings and knowledge of their, their parents. The parents know that this young man and young woman are going out. They have knowledge and they have their blessings. Two. Three, no one's dressed provocatively. No one has a lot of makeup on, heavy makeup or provocative clothing, a lot of skin showing, no, hijab is respected, dressed properly, good hijab. Four, they go out to a public place. And when I say a public place, I don't mean a bar or a club, no. Somewhere that's respectful, somewhere where others are seeing them, watching them, they're not secluded, they're not sitting privately, like an open cafe, where people could see them and they sit and they discuss marriage. Only marriage. With sincere intentions of marriage. And this is another form of dating. Is this haram? Who said? Who said that this is haram? That a young man goes out with another young woman with the permission of their parents, with the blessing of their parents, only with the intention of marriage. Nothing provocative. They don't go to a place that is provocative and they only talk about plans of getting married, to get to know one another for marriage. Who says this is haram? Who says that there are fatwas that say this is haram and that they should not do this? In fact, if we read certain narrations, they say, they don't say that go out and date, but from these narrations you can understand that if a young man and a young woman go out on this kind of date, if you want to call it a date, it's fine. For example, مَنْ جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوُّجُوا If a person comes to you and you are satisfied with, your, with their faith and their akhlaq, then marry them. Well, how do you get to know a person's faith and akhlaq? Just by seeing them at home or at a majlis and that's it, you discover that person's faith and that person's akhlaq? No, you have to get to know the person. You have to get to know them. Whether at home or going on a date like this. In the circumstances that I described. And you get to know that person's akhlaq. Are they angry? Do they have patience? Are they stuck up? Are they arrogant? Are they humble? Are they religious? You get to know them. You get to know their faith and their akhlaq. From this sort of hadith. We discover that getting to know the person from a date like this, it's fine. Another hadith says, Choose wisely your children. How do you choose your children? By choosing the spouse, by choosing the right father, by choosing the right mother. Well, how do you choose the right mother and, and the right father? Just like, just by looking at them or looking at a picture or from your mother telling you, no, by going out, by sitting without having pressure, getting to know them in an unprovocative manner, without crossing the borderlines, getting to know them, you'll discover that is, does this person make a good father or a good mother. There are other narrations that say to men, choose a smart wife. Choose a smart wife. How do you know she's smart? Don't you have to get to know her? Some narrations say choose, good, choose a good looking wife. Yes, looks are important. No one tells you do not marry someone unattractive. No, in Islam, you should marry someone that is attractive. Attraction is a must. Yes, it doesn't have to be at the top of your priorities, but there should be attraction. How do you know these qualities? You have to get to know the person. So, this form of date, Going, going to a place unprovocatively, being well-dressed, hijab is preserved, the blessings of the parents, with the knowledge of the parents, the permission of the parents, without going to a place that is secluded somewhere in public, 
to discuss marriage and only marriage with sincere intentions of marriage, who says this is haram? However, you have to make sure that you don't cross the boundaries. You don't cross the limits. You don't cross the red lines. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know, this sort of day should be considered like an interview, like a job interview. Have you ever had a job interview? Have you ever been interrogated? The date should be like this. It should be a, a two-way interview. For example, you ask a lot of questions. You ask for a reference. Who knows you? Who says that you're a good person? Ask for a reference. Something like a letter of recommendation. You ask for a reference. You ask about that person's background and their history. What have you done? Have you been in previous relationships? Were you ever divorced? What happened? Why did you get a divorce? Ask such questions. What are your plans for the future? What would you like to do in the future? You know, these are important questions. And it's very important to ask the right questions and not silly questions. You know, I see a lot of young people when they're getting married, they, when they want to know the, the other person, they ask the silliest questions. What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie? Obviously, they're going to tell you Titanic. What's your favorite color? Are you serious? You want to marry someone based upon what's their favorite color? Of course, they're going to tell you it's the color of your eyes. Are you a coffee person or a tea? Of course, they're going to tell you whatever you serve me. And so on and so forth. These are silly questions. These are not the right questions to ask someone that you want to share the rest of your life with. Ask the right questions. The questions that matter the most. Right? Ask questions that will make it or break it. Right? Ask hypothetical questions. Like for example, a young lady should ask the young man, you know, what would you do if I took off my hijab? Would you allow me to take off my hijab? Or would you divorce me? Or what, would, what is it that you do? Or the young man should ask like a hypothetical question like, um, you know, what would you do if I changed my job and I started to own a liquor store? Or if I stopped praying? Or, you know, these are the important questions to ask. And this is how you discover, does this person make a good father? Does this person make a good mother? It's a job interview. It's an interrogation. At the end of the day, you're choosing someone that you will spend the rest of your life with.